Hi everyone, it's me, John Lorden, and I'm back with another edition of Brain Scratch. We're going to take a little rest from the Elisa Lamb case this time around, although I do want to give a quick shout out to all the wonderful viewers and commenters on those videos. Um, they are by far my most popular videos on my channel, and they are drumming up a lot of great conversation. I'm doing my best to get back to each and every one of you. Um, but it's becoming a little bit of a chore. There's a lot of good conversation going on there, but I am reading all of it, taking it all in, and I will be doing another video on that very soon, addressing some of your new ideas and um, bringing up some special requests in there. And thank you to a couple friends that have contacted me personally and are now um, kicking in information to try to um, beef that up even more. I appreciate everyone's help on that. And it kind of warms my heart to um, know that so many people care about that case still and that it seems like the majority of us feel like something wrong has happened there in terms of the investigation and it really should be reopened. But uh, this time around on Brain Scratch I wanted to bring up something that is actually going on right now and I don't know if you've caught wind but about a week ago um, something very strange happened. Five Walmart super centers just upped and closed uh, themselves with little to no notice to the employees. And we already know that Walmart has a bit of a history for not treating its employees very well, but being given five hours notice before your store closes is, um, that's pretty bad handling by any sense of, of the imagination. Um, now, worth noting, these people did get severance pay, but as I'm understanding it, they only got the severance pay that was due to them legally. And it's funny because I'm now seeing some articles about how, well, Walmart gave them two months pay and, you know, they didn't have to do that. Uh, actually, they did. So there is no special treatment in, in these uh, people getting those two months of pay. Um, but it has raised a lot of questions. It's extremely strange for a market of that size to close, especially with no notice. The official word from Walmart is that it's due to plumbing issues that have happened in each of these five stores. Um, one of the stores, the one in um, Southern California, happens to be uh, one where a lot of protests came out. I don't know if you've caught, but over the past couple years on Black Friday, there's been a lot of protests about pay wage and employees not being paid enough at Walmart. I actually did a couple videos myself um, trying to raise attention to that. And I believe it's in Pico Rivera. The Pico Rivera store was kind of a hotbed and starting point for a lot of the activism and that's one of the stores that was closed. So what you're seeing on the internet now is a big mishmash of information, um, but there are some very strange questions that are still looming around all this. So first off, I just wanted to start, if you wanna take a look at this for yourself, just open up Google and do a search on Walmart's closed. Um, and you will see, particularly in the news results, there is a lot of articles being written about this. Now what's strange is after the news results, you're gonna see that the articles are thinning out rapidly. And I can tell you, the Google results are changing on this very quickly. It's almost like there is some type of hush campaign going on because I'm seeing the results get thinner and thinner extremely quickly. So um, I can't tell you for certain that I don't know if Google manipulates their information to try to thin it out for, you know, Walmart I'm sure advertises on some Google services um, but I can tell you that the results that I saw from when I started searching on this a week ago to now are extremely different. However, the story is so strange that it has caught on to even mainstream news sources. And while they might not be reporting the same thing as the new media news sources are, they're at least referencing that, hey, there's a bunch of wacky conspiracy theorists, you know, talking about this Walmart thing, and here's what they're saying. Um, really sucks because I wish that mainstream media was actually free to do their own investigation and look into this and help this country like we all believe they are, but that is just not the case, particularly nowadays. However, thankfully there are new media sources, but even there you have to watch it. There are some extremists, um, there's a lot of people that like to, you know, raise, raise the flag and um, just kind of drum up and, and live in fear around these types of situations. And I'm doing my best not to do that on this case, but even on this case, it's getting kind of tough. So 
Um, some of the articles, uh, you're, you're going to see them in major publications. The Los Angeles Times just released one a few days ago talking about how the city of Pico Rivera is taking a huge hit financially with that Walmart being closed for six months. Um, I think over the tune of a million dollars. So, and that kind of begs another question in my head. What is the financial impact of these Walmarts closing to Walmart? I mean, to close five of your super centers has to be millions and millions of dollars worth of income that you just all of a sudden aren't giving. Uh, not to mention the over 2,200 employees that you've let go and those people now becoming unemployed in their respective um, cities, states. So some of the um, writers are asking, was this done specifically to punish these activist workers? And I do think there is an element of truth in that. Um, but I think like with most things of this scale, it's probably more than one deciding factor that made them go with choosing the stores they did and closing these. And we'll take a look at that. Um, the Washington Post, here's one of those articles that I'm talking about that's calling to um, the new media sources. Why Operation Jade Helm 15 is freaking out the internet and why it shouldn't be. Now, if you don't know about Jade Helm 15, this is a military exercise that's going on, and this is real. This is verifiable. Um, the U.S. Army Special Forces has posted information about this directly on their website. We're going to review that in a second. Um, and it's a bit of a strange exercise because they are using, I believe, between seven and nine, mostly southern, um, kind of southwestern, but possibly uh, across the whole south of the U.S., seven to nine states to conduct these military exercises. And they're kind of in a strange way. Part of the description that's coming out is that these exercises are meant to have um, these soldiers kind of traverse across these states and interact with people without getting noticed, which is very, very odd to me. I'm not sure why it's being worded uh, quite like that. But if you take a look down here, this is a map, and this is really, uh, a lot of people are, are getting about a bit freaked out about this map. The red areas are identified as enemy territory, and they have all of Texas listed as that. And in Texas, there are two Walmarts that have uh, actually closed down there. So the theory on the internet is that these Walmarts are being closed specifically for this military exercise. Um, some evidence that supports that is the local governments are reporting that even though Walmart says that there are plumbing issues that need to be fixed, there are no permits taken for any of these stores um, for plumbing work to be conducted there. I saw one report that a plumber was actually sitting outside of a Walmart. He never entered the Walmart. It was like he was sitting there for a day and then he left. I've heard another report that the city actually reached out to one Walmart and offered to have its inspector come down to help them with permits, and they, they turned him away. So it seems like the excuse of it being bad plumbing um, doesn't hold a lot of water. Huh? No, it's just it's not holding up. Um, there are experts that actually have worked with Walmart, particularly with their plumbing, that say it wouldn't take you six months even if you had to replace all the plumbing systems within the entire store. And the normal method that Walmart works under is get it done while the stores are still open or have as small of a closure as possible. Um, so this, where they're just leaving these stores closed for six months, is extremely, extremely strange. The six-month gap does also pretty much cover the entire span of when this Jade Helm 15 military exercise is happening. And um, I think it even gives them like a month after if they're possibly going to reconvert stores back to um, super centers as they were before. So this, um, basically there's one in California, there's two Walmarts that have closed in Texas. There's one that has closed in Oklahoma and then one in Florida, and I have another map here. This is from a YouTube video, and I'm going to have links down in the description for all this stuff so you can come and watch these videos for yourself. This is a pretty straightforward report on the Walmart closures. Um, this is from Western Journalism. But just take a look at the locations. I mean, it seems to me that if you were kind of making distribution centers for pretty much handling all of the southern states, 
you have them there. And what would you be distributing there? I don't know. No. Some of the conspiracy theories that I'm hearing about are that this is them preparing for martial law. They're going to be converting these to detention centers. I don't know. I, I honestly can't say that I believe that. Um, I have heard some mention before of Home Depot and Walmart both being connected to the Department of Homeland Security. And I know personally from working with a company that used to service Home Depots that if you were going to build a detention center, it would be much easier to do it within a Home Depot than a Walmart. Um, as a matter of fact, if you have looked at even the shelving that they use in Home Depots, those are built on what's called turbo rack. And turbo rack can be disassembled and reconfigured very quickly and very easily. And I'm pretty sure you could turn that into mini cells with just uh, moving a couple of bolts. So um, it's kind of strange. Now, what's also spurring a lot of thought behind this is when one of the stores closed, <clears throat> a lady went there and the pharmacy was still open. I think I've seen reports now that this pharmacy is actually closed since this. Um, but when she went there, there were police that were monitoring all of the entry and exit points for the store. Literally just police cars sitting out, just making sure no one comes in, I guess, except for people going to the pharmacy. And once again, that's strange because you have city management that knows nothing about these closures, has no permits for why that's happening, but city resources are being deployed to secure these locations. Very, very odd. Um, this woman was brave enough to record, there's a cop car sitting out back protecting the empty or the non-service of Walmart. It's um, this point where she makes her way in and you can see that the shelving is completely blocking the view of the rest of the store. I don't know if you can hear that, but he's basically talking about how they've turned the shelving and it's basically blocking everything that you can see within the store. So you can't see if the merchandise is still there. I saw reports that the merchandise was actually moved out to other store locations, but there is a second video that the same viewer made where she kind of peeked around the corner and shot it, and it looks like a lot of the merchandise is actually still there. Now, I believe that super centers also include groceries and perishables, so that place being closed for six months, you have to think of all that stock that is basically being destroyed in this process, and what would make Walmart do this? I have no idea. Um, so it's just a bit odd. Also, the windows have been blacked out with, um, they've been covered up with black plastic, which is just another step to make sure no one can see in to a closed Walmart. I'm telling you, I'm scratching my brain all over this one. Um, so this is the United States Army Special Force, Special Operations Command, and this is their official statement that they released about this exercise of theirs, Jade Helm, and they released this March 24th, 2015. Um, just a couple points I wanted to hit on it real quick. Uh, it's saying that they periodically conduct training exercises such as these to practice core special warfare tasks which help protect the nation against foreign enemies. Who is going to invade the U.S.? Seriously. That's not even fathomable. That, that's, not, that's not even modern warfare tactics anymore. How would you... Anyway. Um... It's also worth noting they have conducted other operations like this in the past where they've labeled a, a certain state or a part of a state and they'll even call it, they'll make up like a country name like Pineland or something and then they'll conduct um, their exercises in there. But what's different about this Jade Helm thing is they're doing it across such a broad stretch of the U.S. And there have been some places where they're actually going to be interacting with citizens. And the citizens have been put essentially on high alert so that they're supposed to report any suspicious activity. And this is supposed to help with their operation in terms of are they being covert or not. What really boggles my mind about that is you are essentially scaring citizens to figure out if your troops are performing the right way. Doesn't that chime in with anybody as some form of terrorism? I mean, we already are 
I think starting to fear our law enforcement with how many different cell phone videos we see coming out of um, people being mishandled by them. And now you're going to have special forces troops that are conducting fake covert operations and expect the public to report on that and it's not scaring them. People are getting freaked out just by military helicopters that are flying over these states. There are reports that these military helicopters have actually been going towards these closed Walmarts. I don't know if those are verifiable. Um, there's been reports of tanks being deployed, all types of military equipment that's starting to be placed in certain locations, and that's already freaking people out. In previous military exercises, they actually sent warnings out to certain sections, I guess, of neighborhoods, letting them know that you might hear gunfire while we're doing these exercises. Does your six-year-old kid that's going to elementary school down the street really understand when you tell them, oh yeah, that's the army playing pretend? Doesn't it affect them emotionally anyway? There's just something about this that really calls back to me, um, you know, if you look at what happened in Germany, one of Hitler's things was parading his military through the country, uh, not just to drum up pride, but essentially to show how much power he had amassed. There's something about this that is really just kind of hitting me wrong on that level. I mean, quite frankly, there are huge sections of this country that are barren and maybe mimic the places where we're fighting these wars a little more closely. I mean, there are huge sections of desert in both California and Nevada that go largely untouched, not to mention those places we know about, like Area 51. Why are these exercises not being conducted there when I believe that terrain more closely matches where we're having most of our warfare happen this decade, the Middle East? Um, as a matter of fact, if you think about the layout and the geography of America, what other country matches that? How could this exercise even be viable for being used in another country? If you've gone to Europe, I mean, just notice how architecture is built. It's considerably different than especially, you know, Southern California. It's very, very, there's just so many questions around this for me. Um, and this is what's strange about it. They're directly saying in this that this exercise is routine training to maintain a high level of readiness since they must be ready to support potential missions anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. And that's what I'm, one of the questions I have here. What other sections of the world are like Texas? And not to mention that a lot of radical thought happens around Texas. You frequently have um, you know, state officials that pop off about Texas wanting to pull away from the United States and become its own country. And do you think it's any coincidence that all of Texas has been outlined as enemy territory for this specific exercise? Very, very strange. <clears throat> um, also, what strikes me about this statement is they're saying state and local officials are being informed of the scope of Jade Helm and will continue to be updated as the exercise progresses. Now, if the Walmart super centers are being used for this exercise, that statement is categorically false because the city governments have, at least <laughs> the city managers, have no idea about what's happening with those stores. It does seem like some city services are being deployed there to secure them, but I'm not sure if that might be in response to potential threats of, hey, you know, we've got 500 angry employees and we're worried that this place is going to get looted, which would make, I guess, for a reasonable assumption for them to secure it. Um, although, you know, these Walmarts, it's not like they have a ton of... You know, it's not a giant glass structure that's that easy to break into. If you secure a few points within those large block buildings, you can pretty much make sure that everything inside of it is safe. Which, once again, calls back to, is Walmart working with um, the DHS on this? So, um, Snopes has actually started their coverage on this, and... What's strange about it, they, ha they go into many different 
thoughts about it, but they have not done their research yet. Quite honestly, this is the weakest Snopes article that I've ever seen and leaves you with no conclusion at all, except there's kind of this snide commentary throughout this whole article that, well, this is what they're thinking, but we know that's not true, but they're not providing any proof to counter it, which Snopes is actually usually very good at. I mean, they're kind of the place you go to to see if something is an urban myth or if there's fact behind it. And all that this does is kick around the current internet myths and doesn't really do anything to take them apart. Um, you should take a look at it for yourself. I, I don't want to read through all of them because I know this video is going to go long. Um, now, I bumped into this video pretty quickly after I heard that the stores were closing. When I took an Army logistics class, we developed the U.S. Army developed the logistics system for Walmart. Walmarts were strategically set up around the world to act as military distribution bases. So if we have problems in Yemen, the Special Forces takes over the Walmart in Yemen. You can order a helicopter and nuclear weapons on the Walmart logistics system. There's a back door into it. They taught me that. If you are going to have Operation Jade Helm throughout the Southwest, you seize a Walmart. You can order things such as M16 rounds. You can order an M16 through the Walmart program. So they walk... So this is William Mount, and William Mount actually professes to be um, former military army, I believe, and also an ambassador. And um, he's, a, he's a bit controversial. If you do some research on him, you'll see articles that take previous statements of his and try to argue them. Um, but just to throw his perspective in here, kind of going back to what I was talking about, he thinks that Walmarts can be used as centralized distribution centers, specifically for uh, ammo and gear like that. Um, so it's kind of strange, and he is professing to have inside knowledge that there is definitely coordination between uh, Walmart and the government for these types of operations. Uh, there's another video I'm not going to bring up now, but the link is down below. Um, it is called... Uh, I'm going to call it Walmart tracking your face, <laughs> but basically it is a, um, a blog or a vlog post where the, um, the guy that's talking talks about having inside knowledge and a friend of his or a family member that has worked with Walmart and knows for a fact that the, they are working with the Department of Homeland Security with face detection that is happening um, basically at the front door of every Walmart there is apparently 85% of America goes through the front door of a Walmart and all that footage is being captured and cataloged and sent automatically um, to the Department of Homeland Security. I can tell you, even if it's not being sent to the Department of Homeland Security, even if that information is being captured and cataloged, I'm pretty sure that it, at least the NSA has tapped into that and they're using it for their own purposes. Um, also down in the descriptions, something I don't want to go into too much today, but I think it adds a little color to this whole conversation. Adds color. <laughs> it's a coloring book that the NSA has just released, and it's aimed specifically at children about how cool it is to work for the NSA and spy on your neighbors, I guess. It's really unbelievable, but there's a link below if you want to check that video out. So, um, whoa, don't point that knife at me, sir. Uh, this is... I, I think he's called the Angry Marine, if I remember right. The old, no, he's the old Marine, but I can tell you he's angry, especially about Jade Heller. So if you think, for one moment, you're going to get away with it, you're wrong. You're going to be met with opposition. And you think, well, you're going to convince them, well, we're here to train you. You don't need to be training us a damn thing. We're civilians. We go to work, get up, we pay our bills, we do what we're supposed to do. You don't need to be on our property. You don't need to bring your military. You do not have any business mingling with the civilians. There's law. And that's kind of what I want to leave this video on. I think he makes a great point. He gets a little feisty in this video and it's 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 borderline entertaining. I mean, he's um, he's a bit crotchety, but this is a Vietnam vet. Um, once again, he would have some insight into these types of military operations, and he's pissed off about um, the fact that this will be conducted on 
private land and uh, interacting with citizens, particularly that might not know that they're being interacted with for a military exercise. Now, in terms of con conspiracy theory, you can even look at this and act. Is this a mil or ask? Is this a military exercise at all, or is that the story for them starting to do covert operations within our country against citizens of our country? And I can tell you, I've seen a few news stories lately that lend some credence to that. It, there used to be a time when um, freedom of thought was really precious and freedom of your First Amendment right and being able to speak your mind was seen as valued. And I do see that eroding very, very quickly. There are people now that have been arrested in this country um, because they intended to go join ISIS. Now, as far as I understand, that is not a crime in itself. If someone wants to travel halfway across the world to go investigate some other way of living or some other way of understanding, I believe that they should have the right to do that. Um, ISIS has been identified as a terrorist organization, but who's doing that labeling? Uh, quite honestly, I would like to start labeling some of our institutions as providing terrorism to our own country and uh, the members of it. But unfortunately, I don't have that type of power. Um, so, yeah, this thing is just, it's a little scary because it's starting to edge into pre-crime. Uh, I don't know if any of you are Philip K. Dick fans or if you've seen the movie Minority Report, but it's essentially where you can be arrested because you are intending on committing a crime, and I'm starting to see that happen in our real world. If the conspiracy theorists are right, this Operation Jade Helm is basically just sharpening the knife blade to be used against our own country, and I think the only reason they would do that would be to stop the conversation of change. And I think that uh, anyone that has worked in big business, or quite honestly, if you even looked deep enough and hard enough at um, our college infrastructure, you'd know that open thought and uh, free speech are not being supported very well in this country. They're definitely not being respected. There are certain conversations that large institutions are l looking to shut down, like Walmart, with their employees. Um, they don't want to address the conversation. They don't want to engage the conversation. They just want it to end quickly. Uh, as a matter of fact, SeaWorld can even be put into that category. So that's where I'm leaving it. I'm leaving it with you. I'm scratching my brain all over this. Tell me, please, down in the comments, what do you think? Is Walmart closures related to Jade Helm? My gut is telling me I think that's pretty much a go. I, th I think that is true. The location map from uh, the closed Walmarts to where they're admitting that they're having military exercises and they previously have had military exercises, which includes Florida, seems to match. Um, the other thing is that map, just in terms of being logistic for either collecting something or distributing something, that's pretty damn good regionalization that you have going there. I mean, if you were a business, that's the type of distribution that you would be looking for if you were going to be, you know, selling potato chips across the southern U.S. So, what do you think? I really need your help on this one. Please be sure to comment below and um, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know how you feel about all this. Is Alex, Alex Jones right? Is this the coming of the new revolutionary war? Is our U.S. government looking to stop any potential Minutemen that could be banding together and trying to form some type of resistance? I don't know. But um, in any case, it's clear people are scared because there's tons of YouTube videos. People are talking about this from that angle. There are now mainstream articles talking about how people are being freaked out about all this. And to me, when you're doing something that is scaring a populace, that's called terrorism. So anyway, I hope you all stay safe. And, um, you know, maybe you want to think twice before you head to that local Walmart. I know they might have the best deal on a toilet paper, but maybe it's worth paying a couple of extra cents and going somewhere else. Take care, everyone. I hope you have a great day.